Right, writing an essay composition we made it eventually and we learned a lot of things but learning takes effort it takes the mind it takes the heart i am going to learn why did we learn because you know our difficult subjects were to learn because we looked at the future our future when we finish school our future when we graduate and because we're looking at the future i want to come out of this institution school primary secondary tertiary university college i want to come out of this with a certificate that's why we persevered now it says learn to do well and sometimes you know our bad our old bad habits will try to come back but we'll say no i'm going to learn i'm going to persevere i'm going to be diligent why we're looking at the future the future in heaven we want to come out of this earth with a do well certificate with a well done certificate that we know we came to this life where God saved and then we learned to do what's right according to what a child of God ought to do and then we also got sanctified and the sanctified life we have to persevere we have to focus and we have to resist temptation so as to keep to the learning of God the experience of God in salvation sanctification it takes focus it takes a mind it takes something that says i'm looking at the head i'm looking at the time i leave this earth you leave college and then you go to the next level you go to heaven that's why it says learn to do well and seek judgment and relieve the oppressed and judge the fatherless and plead for the widows then it says in verse 18 in verse 18 it says come now and let us reason together says the lord do your sins be as scarlet they shall be as white as snow and do they be red like crimson they shall be as so look at verse 19 if 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 ye be willing and obedient all that he has told us to do that's the way of blessing and that's the way of receiving the good good things he has promised in the covenant if ye be willing and obedient ye shall eat the good of the land somebody say good amen, amen. look at verse 20 there in verse 20 but if ye refuse look at god he says if you be willing and obedient at god can you force us to be to be obedient he says no i won't force anything can't you make us obedient i've given you the grace once you are saved you can do it i've given you the anointing if you're a child of God, you can do it. The, the anointing remains. If you want to obey, the strength is there. If you have the heart to obey, you'll find the strength is there to obey. So if you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of them. But you have your choice. You're a free moral agent. You can obey, you can disobey. But there is consequence for obedience, there's consequence for disobedience. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be destroyed, devout with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. We're reading from verse 29. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Acts. Chapter 5, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. We were born again. We were sanctified. He prayed for our sanctification. And he said, Father, sanctify them. Through thy truth, thy word is truth. And because he prayed for sanctification, and he said, Father, I thank you because you always hear me. The Lord 
God in heaven answer the prayer. Uh, when, when you pray for salvation, you cannot just say, I'm saved, I'm saved. There must be a change in your life. The joy of salvation that comes and makes you to understand, makes you to know you are saved. When you are sanctified, there will be the evidence there that the Lord has sanctified you because he makes you free from the Adamic nature and free from the bad habits of the old life. He makes you so free and you know that this is the freedom that comes with sanctification. And when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, there is evidence. The power comes with an evidence. You know, I am sanctified. And that's what the Lord wants of us. These people said, we're saved, we're sanctified. We're even filled with the Holy Ghost now on what grounds? Look at verse 32. In verse 32, and we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that obey him that obey him they were saved and so they could you know obey the lord in what way when the lord said he requires the past all the lies of the past go correct them and that will show the evidence was saved all the things were stolen in the past and you are masked there either you are using them or you are not using them but you stole them the Lord is saying return them to the owner Abimelech return to Abraham his wife it is you know when you are saved there will be something to show that you are obedient and it is that experience of salvation, that experience of sanctification, that experience of becoming a son of God, a daughter to God. It's that experience that brings the grace into your life and you become obedient to the Lord. And then you're not praying for the Holy Ghost baptism, you're saved, you have obedience that shows for it. Anything that wasn't tried to have dis discarded them and all the, all the um, restitution you need to make. And the, the Lord gives us the grace when we're saved. He gives us the grace when we're sanctified. And then you do that. And now you are asking for the Holy Ghost baptism. It says, whom the Lord has given to them that obey him. I'm going to ask you pointedly, are there things you have stolen? Still in your possession? still in your house, still hidden somewhere. The blessings of God cannot come until you obey him. Are there things you are covering up? Are there things, you know, you stay back there and then you are propelling other people and sending other people Go and do evil, go and do evil, go and do evil. Except that is corrected, you will remain like that without the fulfillment of the blessing of the Lord. He said, he has given us the Holy Spirit, he has given us the power, he has given us the grace because what he gave us for us, we obeyed him. And now he continues to bless us because we continue to obey the word of the Lord. I pray the Lord will grant you such obedience in Jesus name if I do that if I confess that if I obey that if I do that restitution what will people say there you are you are worshipping self you want to be looked at as a good man, as a good woman, when you know in your heart of hearts, you are a bad man. You are a thief and you are a backslider. But you want people to hold you high, look up at you, hide there. When you are down there, that's why you are not obeying the Lord. What will they say if I stop that? What will they think? Then they will know I was doing that in the past. I really don't want to continue now, but if I stop, they will think you are worshipping self. When you forget about self, and you forget about what people think, what people say, and you obey the Lord, whatever people think of you, would you rather have the respect of men here and go to hell? 
or lose the respect of men here and go to heaven that's where you stand it says he gave the holy ghost the holy spirit baptizing them because they had obeyed him we're looking at romans chapter 6 reading from verse 16 romans chapter 6 verse 16 know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants his servants ye are to whom ye obey his servants ye are to whom ye obey if satan suggests something to you and you obey that you are a servant of satan if the culture, the community, by what they do, they are fraught, that is the common thing now, where those who have some little understanding of, uh, you know, internet, and they, they do fraud, they do evil. If you obey what you see in the community, you are a servant of those people. It says, the servants ye am, to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Then in verse 17, it says, but God besides that ye were servants, were in the past servants of sin, then but ye have obeyed from the heart. I've obeyed from the heart, not I service, I've obeyed from the heart. You have the conviction in your heart. This is the will of God. This is the word of God. And this is the way to go by the dictates of the word of God. And then you obey from the heart. It says you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Verse 18. In verse 18, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Look at chapter 16 of Romans. I'm reading from verse 19 chapter 16 of romans verse 19 for your obedience has come abroad unto all men i am glad therefore on your behalf but yet i would have you wise unto the unto that which is good and simple concerning evil that is ignorant of evil you don't even act as if you don't know evil what does that mean we know many words in the dictionary that even though we know them we act as we do, as if we don't know them how we don't use them we forget about them your head is and then you put in a bad terrible as shaking adjective we don't choose that anymore your life is like when we're talking to someone we don't choose those words anymore we don't point at them and look at them and use those we know that we don't know those evil words we don't choose them anymore we know the evil action we don't practice them because we make ourselves simple ignorant of evil that's when verse 20 will now come in in our lives verse 20 and the god of peace shall bruise satan under your feet shortly yeah. it's when we we'll be verse 19 and that obedience is there as an evidence of our salvation as an evidence of our sanctification, as our evidence of total submission and surrender unto the Lord. It is when that is there and we have that unqualified, uninterrupted obedience to the Lord, that is when we have the experience of verse 20, that the God of peace shall grow Satan under my feet shortly under my feet shortly under your feet shortly in jesus name we're coming now to verse 26 in verse 26 but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting god made known unto all nations for the obedience of faith 
the obedience of faith. Faith will not work except it has obedience incorporated into that faith. It's the obedience of faith. I believe, I believe, I believe. Do you obey? It's when obedience goes along with that faith that that faith will be dynamic and that faith will function very well. It is for the obedience of faith. Amen. Amen, Amen for our church. Amen. Amen for everyone in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two now. Point number two, we're looking at the comfort privilege. The comfort privilege of covenant keeping believers. The people who believe in the Lord and they show it, they believe in the Lord and they have the evidence of that faith in the Lord, the privilege that comes on them and the privilege that is conferred upon them. Look at Genesis chapter 22 we're reading from verse 17 that in blessing I will bless thee and in multiplying i will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the as the sand which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies why on what grounds look at verse 18 it says in verse 18 and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because 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 it's not because you know that's what god said they will do whether you are right or wrong, I'll still do it. Whether you are up or down, I'll still do it. Whether you are right, whether you are righteous or righteous, I'll still do it. No. It says, this I will do because thou hast obeyed my voice. Because thou hast obeyed my voice voice. Look at Psalm 91. In Psalm 91, we're reading from verse 7. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Amen. You know, for the children of Israel, millions of them, they came out of Egypt, not one person feeble among their tribes. How? And it says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Why? There is a because, there's a reason why. Look at our, ch look at our church, even this service, and look at all our brethren here in Lagos, in all the districts, and look at all the states and all the regions and all the congregations, and look at how many they are. And think of them, no evil, no sickness, no infirmity, and no destruction coming upon anyone this year in Jesus' name. Is it possible? I said, is it possible if we fulfill his condition? A thousand of outsiders shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand of religious, formal, traditional worshippers, ten thousand at the right hand, but it shall not come near thee. In verse 8, it says in verse 8, only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. In verse 9, it says, because, because, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. You have made the Lord, the bridegroom, our savior, our provider. You have made him our shepherd, your habitation. Now, let, let's say, for example, your husband was physically with you. And then there's uh, one refrag, one person somewhere coming to make advances to you. And your husband is there looking at you, and you're looking at your husband. 
even a sinner generally generally would a sinner sinning woman yield to that person that is asking for the lust of the flesh while the husband is there they are not talking not to talk of a believer now if the lord is really there your habitation if your shepherd is also there your habitation if you're conscious that your husband the bridegroom is there and all these people having the works of the flesh and they're making advances to you if you are conscious that the lord is present there physically will you respond tell me but you know if a so-called believer is yielding to whatever works of the flesh activities of sin and he's doing things that should not see the light of day he has not made the most high his habitation and because he has not made the lord his habitation and he's acting as if god does not exist the man is an atheist the woman church man church woman is an atheist he doesn't believe that god sees what he's doing he knows the word of god in the head but he doesn't have the heart to be obedient to the lord he has not made the lord the most high his habitation that's why those things are happening look at verse 10 in verse 10 there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any play come near the dwelling in verse 12 it tells us in verse 12 it says they shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone are you following me? evil or the devil has placed a stumbling block and you're walking and walking if you're obedient to the lord if you're a child of god you may not see that stumbling stone but the lord has seen that stumbling stone and because you obey him and because you make god your habitation he will send his angel before you get to that stumbling block the angels will lift you up but if you are disobedient if you are rebellious, if you are sinful, if you are habitually unrighteous and the stumbling block is there that you might stumble, your health might go, your property might be lost. God sees the stumbling block there, but the condition he gave, you are not obeying. And you are just walking here, there, and backsliding, sinning, or unrighteous, and all that. He will not send his angel. It is because we obey him. It is because we trust his word. It is because we obey his word implicitly. That's what he said then if you're obedient and you make the lord your habitation they shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against this to look at verse 13 in verse 13 thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder young lion the young girl and the dragon thou shalt trample on the feet then in verse 14 is it because look at that because because he has set his love upon me therefore will i deliver him therefore because he sets his love upon me and because if you love somebody you will regard him you will honor him you will obey him we will be out of love if we don't obey and we just say i love you i love you i love you that one that one is just one that one is not real it says because he has set his love upon me therefore when i deliver him i will set him on high because it very quickly it tells us i'm saying this to the people who honor him i'm saying this to the people who obey god i'm saying this to the people who reverence and respect him it says because he has no not my name then in verse 15 it says he shall call upon me and i 
will answer. That's the covenant. The people, the people who are obedient to the word of God and the people who honor the Lord and honor the word of God, they are the people that he has for It's not just every dick and Harry. It's one is you know, doing the smoking, that one is doing their drinking, that one is doing their stealing, that one is doing their adultery, that one is uh, doing their fornication. Even in the new year, that one is doing the messing up everywhere. And then it comes, Covenant Sunday, Covenant Sunday, we're going to pray and the Lord is going to answer. Wait a minute. He says, because... You set your love upon him because you make him your habitation, because you're obedient to him, and because you're born again, and you show the evidence of being, of being born again. He said, because of that, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will honor, deliver him, and honor him. Somebody shout, Amen. Yeah. Psalm 25, uh, uh, sorry, Isaiah chapter 56, and I'm reading from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 4, thus says the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths. Unto the eunuchs, every eunuch, no that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me. Thus says the Lord to the people that choose the things that please me, the things that please the Lord, the things that exalts the Lord, the things that forgets about self, and then you honor the Lord with your life, with your obedience. It says, thus says the Lord, unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. And then he tells us in uh, the next uh, verse there, he tells us in verse uh, 5, it says in verse 5, even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than the sons all of daughters, I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Those are the people that choose the things that please the Lord. Those are the people that will have the irreversible blessings of God upon their lives. We're looking at um, First Kings chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 9, 1 Kings 11, reading from verse 9. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because, because, that's the Solomon, he said, you have asked the things that please me. Because of that, I'll make you rich. Because of that, I'll set you on high. Because of that, I'll do this and I'll give you wisdom that no king before you has ever had. And even people after you, you'll be special because your prayer pleased me. But now the Lord, that same God that was happy with him, that same God that blessed him, that same God that promoted him, the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. Look at the favor Abraham, uh, that Solomon had had, and look at the relationship and the interaction between him and the Lord. Look at the great blessings the Lord had given him. But now he took things for granted. Wisdom that he had. Knowledge that he had. Favor that he had. Blessings that he had. Now the Lord had given him blessings. But now as he took everything for granted and went to marry strange wives and followed after their gods and their idols, King Solomon. 
And because of all that he did and his riches, he used his money, spent his money to build for the gods and the idols of those concubines. It says now the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord, the God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. Some people think the love of God is unconditional. They think he loves you, loves you forever. Fall into the ditch, he loves you forever. Go into the far country, he loves you forever. Help and age idol worshippers to worship their idols, he loves you forever. And take the people who are disobeying, denying God, publicize them, he loves you forever. He doesn't work that way. The Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice in verse 10. Verse 10 then tells us, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. And then now he tells us in verse 11, in verse 11 it says, Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, Solomon, come, I want to talk to you. Solomon, for as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant, conditional covenant, Solomon, you of all people, wise, intelligent, rich, and you have the strength to do this, and you can read, you can write, and I commanded you this, and look at the direction you are going. It says, you have not followed my covenant and my statutes, which I commanded thee. I will surely rent, tear, take away the kingdom from thee, and will give each unto thy servant. One servant. He had a servant that was good, sharp, intelligent, forthright, and powerful. And so the Lord said, He's, he has the ability to rule the nation, even though it's your servant. I'm not going to give everything now to you. I'm going to give part of that kingdom unto thy servant. What did Solomon do? Did Solomon say, okay, it's God, I'm sorry. I cost this for myself. I'm sorry that I'm losing my privilege. I repent. We don't know what God would have done if he had repented. What he do? Look at verse 40. In verse 40, Solomon sought therefore, therefore, because God had pointed to him that, look at that servant, because of what you have done, because of disobedience, and because of your rebellion, I'm going to give part of, that, of the kingdom to that servant. Therefore, Solomon sought to kill Jeroboam. He said, ah, that's the one God you are mentioning. Okay, before you allow him to rule and take my place, I will kill him. And that's not the attitude we are to have. When God is correcting us and is saying my covenant is still there, my promises are still there, but you are losing it because of this and because of that. Okay, now I'm going to put that person in your place. And if that is the case, I'll kill that man. I'll dribble him. I'll torture him. I will make him to even forget how to use his intelligence. I might not be able to kill him physically, but I'll kill him psychologically. I kill him spiritually. I use whatever they use to you know, confuse the man. How are you going to do that? Look, that's what Solomon did. It says, and Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt. God, I want to accept the promise to be a king. Like you said, you'll give to him, but the man wants to kill me, and he ran away. How do you, how do you send people away from the church? They are coming to 
be blessed by God to do that and then you do your maneuvering and then you send them away they run away from the church and there's a man that you know knew the Bible knew the word of God knew the promises of God and knew the covenant of God what's your goal what are you doing why are you in the church that the people that should do this and do that you have something to you have you know conspiracy and whatever and then they run away from the church we shouldn't do that it did not benefit Solomon and then you say that man was in Egypt until the death of Solomon Solomon did not reconcile with God after God said you're not keeping my covenant you're not obeying me this is what I said I will do I told David if your children will walk after me I will make up their children to take over the throne Solomon you spoiled the whole covenant and I'm angry with you and the man did not repent he was in that anger pursuing the servant to kill that servant until he died what shall it profit a man if he shall gain all the knowledge all the authority all the power on earth and lose his own soul in john chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 31 john chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 31 it tells us it said then said jesus to those jews which believed on him if that's the condition we believe in him now if and it says if he continue in my word then shall he be my disciples indeed what are the words of jesus anyone that will humble himself like this little child shall be exalted if you continue in my word anyone that exalts himself will be abased if you continue in my word and if you are bringing your gift to the altar you remember that somebody has ought he gives you leave your gift at the altar it's not about activity about duty about this and that leave your gift go reconcile what's your brother who has something good that's christianity that's the word of christ it says if you continue in my word blessed are the pure in heart not the people that uh, you know kind of uh, money doing this and doing that pure in heart for they shall see the Lord that's the word of the Lord except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees he shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven that's the word of Christ if you continue in my word ye hypocrites you appear righteous externally but inwardly you are ravening wolves that's the word of Christ are we going to remain in hypocrisy all our lives what are we trying to achieve it says then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him if ye continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed and in verse 32 and it says and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free amen, amen. you shall know the truth why doesn't the truth make us free? Because we know the truth in the head, not in the heart. We know the truth, we learn the truth, we hear the truth, we increase in the knowledge of the truth. Why doesn't it change our lifestyle? Why doesn't it bring a life that is shining for the glory of God? We know that truth in the head. We have not transferred it to our hearts. And we're not looking for transforming truth. And our lives are not transparent. If we really know the truth in our heart, if we know the truth and we're devoted to the truth, and we're not devoted to tradition, we're not devoted to, you know, what people want us to do. If we really knew the truth, the truth will make us free. It will make us free this year in Jesus' name. Even if we do less, less, if you have been doing 10 things, sweating, working, putting all your strength, all your skill into it, 10 things, but it's on the platform of hypocrisy, lying, deception, jolting other people, 
deceiving other people, destroying the lives of other people, scattering the families of other people. You're doing ten things. All those ten things, they mean nothing to God. But we know the truth now. What is important is my heart to God, my life to God, my devotion to God, my transparency before God. And even if I do less, I do six things, I drop one, two, three, four. Because much of those things, if they had been like just wanting recognition, I drop them. I do less. The less that you do in transparency of life, the less that you do, in a life that is acceptable in the sight of God will be so much blessed for you and for the people you are ministering for. That's why this year we are not looking at activity, activity, activity and the hypocrisy is falling out of the activity. The righteousness is underneath the activity. The insincerity is underneath the activity and the destruction of other people's lives following the activity. Stop that. Stop that. And do less. And then when you do that less in truth and you do that less uh, number of things in total transparency unto God. And you remember God in everything you do. The blessings for people that you are ministering to. Because the Spirit will back up the, what you are doing. The power will back up what you are doing. The anointing will back up what you are doing. You become free. You make other people free. And everybody will enjoy the blessings of the Lord in their lives in Jesus' name. Ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you, tell me, free. Look at point number three here. Point number three, we're looking at the courageous prayer of all covenant keeping beneficiaries. As I told you earlier, prayer is very important, but prayer is not the key. The prayer of faith, the faith that stems out of obedience, that the prayer that the key, not every prayer. When we pray, and underneath that prayer, there is obedient heart. Underneath that prayer, there's a sincere heart. Underneath that prayer, there is a focused heart on the honor of God. That's the prayer God recognizes. We're looking at First Kings chapter 8. Chapter 18, verse 21. First Kings 18, verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long ought ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Elijah came and said, three years of famine have come and gone. We're in the fourth year of famine. And that fourth year of famine, about half of the year has gone already. And now we're still like this. Look at the famine. Look at the suffering. Look at the death. Look at the sicknesses. Baal has not helped the nation. Your hypocritical service has not helped the nation. Your disobedient life has not helped the situation now. If God be God, let's follow him. And if Baal, follow him. They couldn't answer. And then uh, Elijah made a proposal. Let these prophets of Baal, let them take up a bullock and pray. But not put fire. And then I will do my own. Whichever God brings the fire, that's the God we are going to serve. I didn't hear you. And so those, you know the story already. I don't need to read it to you. Those uh, people, they did all they wanted to do. They caught themselves. They shouted. They ran and all. Nothing happened. So Elijah said, come aside. And then he set the altar right. He said, put water. They put water. The water that should not even allow the fire to come up. And now a courageous prayer. He said, God, the God of heaven, 
I come because of these people. And before he finished the prayer, the fire came down. A courageous prayer. Nobody had ever prayed a kind of prayer like that before in the whole Bible. And yet this man had the courage to pray that kind of prayer and God answered the prayer. If we're obedient to the Lord, saved and sanctified, our prayers will be answered. After that, he dealt with the, um, those people, false prophets. Then he told Ahab, he said, prepare your chariot. And this man, Elijah, courageous prayer what rivers showers rain that had not come for three and a half years he prayed and then he told the servant go and see the servant said i see nothing why didn't you see anything are you one of those people that don't believe go and see again he came back the third the seventh time he said now i can see this year you will see the hand of god fire came the rain came, courageous prayer. Look at the next one there. That's in First Samuel. I'm reading from chapter 7, verse 8. The people of Israel, they had gone away from the Lord again. And the children of Israel said unto, unto Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of of the Philistines. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, it tells us, and Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord of, of Israel, and the Lord heard him. The Lord will hear you. Look at verse 10. It says, When the Lord heard him, and as Samuel was offering up, the bunch offering. The Philistines drew near to battle against, against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them. And there was meeting before Israel. You lost your amen. Samuel prayed. And all those Philistines, they had the ammunition and the weapons and everything. Look at Israel, almost like having nothing. But just pray. courageous prayer that Samuel prayed. Immediately, the Lord sent his thunder, scattered those people, and destroyed those people. God can do that again. He says, I am God, I change not. Why do we pray, pray and pray? An ordinary headache is not healed. Why do we pray, pray and pray? An ulcer has continued for six, seven years, and the ulcer is still there. Why do we pray, pray and pray? And this one is dying of cancer. That one is becoming blind at a young age. That one is having leukemia, you know, at young age. And we pray, pray and pray and we fast. And things are not happening. They are happening everywhere. They are happening where we go. They are happening on the side there. I can tell you, you know, testimonies of things happening that you didn't he won't hear about because after the crusade they sent back to me and they say this happened this happened this happened even to people in other places in other religions spectacular things and special things and spiritual things and supernatural things happening everywhere but we at home let's talk to ourselves are we going to continue like this what's in our hand what's in our lives and what's uh, happening to us that all these good things are happening to other people and uh, when we go there just once in a while and over here it appears that the skies are sealed it's because we have not responded to the word of god like we ought to things will change in our prayer life so that as we are obedient to the Lord while we are yet speaking, like Samuel, he'll send the thunder, he will disperse all those demons in Jesus' name. 
and we're looking at Isaiah chapter 37 and I'm reading from verse 21 Isaiah chapter 37 verse 21 then Isaiah the son of Amos sent unto Ezekiah saying thus says the Lord God of Israel whereas thou hast prayed unto me against Sinachero the king of Assyria. Look at verse 22. In verse 22, this is the word which the Lord has spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, has despised thee. And the daughter, and he says, and latch thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem has shaken a head at you. Look at verse 36 now. In verse 36, it says, Then the angel of the Lord went forth and smote the camp of the Assyrians, and hundred and four score and five thousand, one hundred and eighty-five thousand enemies, soldiers, and to the teeth. But because of the simple prayer, courageous prayer, spectacular prayer of Isaiah, the Lord now sent the angel of the Lord. And it says in the last line, and when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. Amen. That king had written a letter to Ezekiah and said, Don't say you are depending on God. Are you depending on prayer? Depending on this, on that. See what I did to this. See what I did to that. The man even became afraid. The king of Judah, he became afraid. And then he prayed, he fasted. And then Isaiah said, Go tell Ezekiah. This is a simple matter. Because of obedience, and because of yieldedness to the covenant of the Lord, and because your heart depends on me without looking here and there, I'll deal with him on your behalf. The Lord will deal with them on your behalf. But you must not be like them, looking at them, thinking of them, fearing for them. And you must not be like them, trembling for them. Whatever they do, look at your God and pray the courageous prayer and say, Lord, here is what you have promised. And this year, the thunder of heaven will come upon your enemies in Jesus' name. Look at Acts chapter 12. We're reading from verse 5. Acts chapter 12, verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the Lord unto God for him. Peter, the forefront apostle, James already gone, and Herod thought Peter is next, and he will not escape this. And so he put him in prison. The day he was to touch him, bring him out, kill him, destroy him, forget about him, and then scatter the church. Herod is not powerful enough to scatter the church. Upon this rock, I build my church. And the gates of hell, not only one gate, all the gates of hell with Herod, with Pharaoh, with Pilate, everyone shall not prevail against the church. The church that runs the agenda of God cannot be destroyed by men on earth that have earthly agendas. And a Christian that follows the agenda of God will not be destroyed by any man, any woman, any group of people having a human agenda in Jesus' name. Peter therefore was kept in prison. 
prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And then we're reading there from verse 7. In verse 7, Behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter, is to wake him up, not to kill him, smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off from his hands. Understand, Peter was chained to soldiers. Those soldiers were supposed to be watching him so he doesn't ex escape. And the chain made of iron rings, if anybody moves, that the chain will make sound. And because they are chained, chained on this side, chained on that side, there's no way he could have escaped. But the angel came and smote him, tapped him, and he woke up, and the chain, chains, plural, fell off from his hands. The soldier here did not hear the sound of the chain. The soldier here did not hear the sound of the chain. And then they didn't sense any movement. And the angel said, put on your sandals. He put on his sandals. And they didn't wake up. And the chain in their hand became heavier because the chain was now only in their hands. That didn't affect them. They kept on sleeping. That's how they are on sleeping. And then the angel said, come on. And then he came. But there is God, you know God, you know what he do. One standing at that door, one standing at that And they're fully armed. Anything, even if a rat passes, that soldier is there or kill the rat. But as Peter and the angel got to the door, the door opened by itself. Amen. Amen. The padlock opened. Everything they have padlocked before you will open up to you. And then the door, iron door, iron door. The iron door opened and Peter went out. And he came to the second iron door. And again, it opened automatically. Heaven does not need the key to that padlock. Is the creator of all things. And that padlock will open in Jesus' name. The enemy might have locked you up. And then they have guards that intimidate with everything they have. And as you are to come out, just looking at their faces will make you shrink. I will make you turn back and say, Angel, go. I prefer to stay in this dungeon than see those angels, than see those uh, people, those girls, and look at what they have in hand. The Lord will close their eyes to you. Yeah. And the Lord will close your eyes to them. Yeah. The second gauge, they came and they passed on. I am moving on. I am moving on. And then Peter realized this is deliverance. He thought he was dreaming. This one is not a dream. What will happen in your life this year? Good, good things. You will think you are dreaming. It will not be a dream. It will be reality in Jesus' name. Then he came out that same chapter. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, that same chapter 12, upon his search day, Herod, that the one who imprisoned Peter, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon the throne and made an oration unto them. Verse 22. In verse 22, and the people gave a shout. 
That's what the people do. They praise the bad man. They humiliate the good man. They exalt the destroyer. And they destroy the developer. That's what they do. The world has not changed. And they said, it is the voice of a God and not of a man. Verse 23, and immediately the angel of the Lord, the angel that delivered Peter out of that dungeon, that same angel come back, came back now, the angel of the Lord smote him, he smote Peter, and Peter arose. He smote Herod, the same hand, Herod gave up the ghost because he gave not God the glory and he was eating of worms and gave up the ghost. The angel of the Lord is there. For you, he will act positively. Yeah. And the angel of the Lord is still there. For them, he will act destructively. We're looking at chapter 13 of Acts, Acts chapter 13, and we're reading from verse 3. In verse 3, and when that fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Look at verse 8, as they sent them away, they went in ministry. And the ministry they went for now. In verse 8, and Elimus, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation. We stood there. Oh, there are people, don't fear anybody, fear Barnabas or fear Paul.